Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Michelle, and it's about time I gave you guys an update on how my Instagram thrift store is doing. Back when I started my Instagram thrift store in August of 2020, I made an initial video, which I will of course link, um, and it explained how I was going to set up my store. But now I have run it for um, six months, I'm not gonna do the math, um, and it has actually turned out to be a pretty successful thing and it's something that I now continuously do every single week. I drop new items every Tuesday and Thursday, so if you are unfamiliar with my thrift store, obviously I will link it down below so that you can scroll and see the way I do it, but I did want to give you guys a, like, process video. I did the how I started it video. I now want to do the how I'm running it video. Uh, I am going to photograph and get myself ready for my next launch. Um, I do this every Sunday simply because right now I'm currently working at 9 to 5 on top of doing these drops every Tuesday and Thursday. So Sunday is my day where I prep everything so that I have everything ready for the drop and that I'm ready for the week because there is no sunlight besides today with a 9 to 5 job. You leave when it's dark and you come back when it's dark. So to get that optimal pho photograph of lighting for my products, yeah, I gotta do it on Sunday. So let's start the video. Okay, I'm literally still in my pajamas now, so no judging, but what I have this week for products, it is locked down right now, so usually I get my products from either Depop, uh, thrift shopping, um, and the third one is consignment. Right now I am doing actually solely consignment, simply because the thrift stores are closed. I do have a few items from Depop, um, but I don't know if I will do them in this drop or not, but I had a lovely lady come over and drop me four bags of like the prettiest clothes ever, so I'm doing consignment with her. The way that consignment works for me is simply that when an item gets sold, I give the person who gave me the item 30% of the sale. Um, so that is what I'm doing with these guys. So last night I went through her garbage bags and sorted out the more wintry clothes that it's January. I thought I would upload onto my page now to sell now and not try to sell them in, you know, springtime. So I sell with the season. I notice that things that are more summery don't sell in the winter and vice versa. So, um, what I'm gonna do is I always take my photos three different ways. So I take it laying flat on my bed because I've got a nice colored background for my duvet cover. I take them on my door um, just to show it hanging up on a hanger and then for some items I do, do, don't do this for every specific item just because of some, some obviously just don't fit. Um, some I feel like I showed it well enough with the two other photos. So then I take it on my body for the third step. So the way that I begin every single order is that I mark the clothing down into this big spreadsheet. Um, let me know if you want me to make this like a template, like a spreadsheet template for your shop. I can do that. Um, I'm not going to show you mine simply because it's got all of my finances and my clients like details, like their address and stuff. So I'm not, I'm not gonna be able to show you it, but if you do want to see it, I can make a template of what I use and like maybe get a, get a Google doc link that I'll share with everyone. Um, just so it's like a nice little, little, you can have this too for your Instagram thrift store. Um, so what I do then is I would take an item and then I would research the brand, research the item, and research what other people are selling the item as, and then I would mark it into my system and put the size so that I'm able to reflect back to it when customers ask me about different sizing details or when I'm posting the item. So I put the size, how much it cost me to buy, and then the two prices that I will be selling it at. The way that my thrift shop works is that I do a bid price, which is always a low price, it is always the lowest I'm willing to go on an item, and then a bin price, which is the buy it now price, which means if a customer loves an item and really wants it, then they are able to securely buy it at that price. If they do a bid, they may lose the bid, they may be outbid, someone else may buy it at the bin price, so it's never a guarantee with the bid price, but it is a guarantee with the bin price, so that is how I do it. I did not come up with that one on my own, I saw other people doing it and thought it was great. And I find it works really well because when a customer sees, and like I'm the same way, I, I online thrift shop too, when a customer sees the bid price being so much lower than the bin price, then you it's like a sense of you get a deal if you are bidding the bid price. Um, especially if you win the bid at something lower, then you always feel like, oh, I could have spent that much at the bin price to guarantee it, but I just happened to risk it all and get it at the bid price. So that is why I do that. So I put that all in my spreadsheet. I get all my items. This week, I think I'm doing... 
20 items, so 10 items in each drop. I usually do more, but it's January, and I find my items aren't selling as much as they did every other month, just because it's bad for retail no matter what. It's January, everyone is shopped out. We are in another lockdown. So yeah, I'm selling a little bit less quantity-wise so that when sales start up again, I know that I have that those items that I can either put on sale or just have even more items left and remaining to like throw out there. So that's what I'm doing. I'll catch you guys when I'm doing the photography. <laughs> so here is my first photography setup. It's not the most complicated thing in the world. Um, a lot of my photography ends up looking better in the end just by the edits and the photography style that I do do. I mentioned in my first video the importance of taking a really good photo and that's why I try to take three really good photos for each item. Um, so I literally just lit flatly an item out. I hope that it's sunny out. It's not the sunniest day, but that I, there's some tricks I can play in editing to make the photos look a little bit better, like it was a sunny day. Um, and then I just take a million pictures of a million items that all get stored on my phone. I've just got the iPhone XR, so you don't need the best quality phone in the world. You just need a phone to take your pictures. You don't need a best quality camera. You can just use your phone. <laughs> Yes, I'm currently watching Legend of Korra as I take my photos. Um, you guys can see this is the little setup I have. So I've got my phone on a tripod. Um, and then I've just got, here I'll flip it around. So I've just got this little corner set up, just kind of cute to just give my, well I mean one, just to have a nice background and to have a nice little corner in my room. But two, it just makes a nice backdrop for the photos of the clothing that I'm taking. Um, I would love to be able to just take it in this mirror, but I find it doesn't get as good as lighting as it does if I'm taking it directly from the source of my giant window with the amazing view I get to look out on. Okay, ooh, the white balance there. <laughs> so now that I've taken a million photos, which means that my entire phone is nothing but photos for the shop. One. I go in and I will select the photos that I took today that I would like to use um, for my store. So I simply would just favorite them, then upload them into Visco. I use the same filter on every single photo that I edit so that it's a cohesive theme. It's very much into my marketing, um, which I explained more about my marketing in my previous video. Um, but I do think that my marketing style is the reason why I have been so lucky to be so successful in my little Instagram side hustle. Um, so using that same filter, everything kind of looks the same, everything's a bit more cohesive on my feed and makes everything look like a, a thing that you could scroll through and they would all go together. <laughs> Guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, I upload them then into preview, or what is my app called? Yeah, I then upload them into a preview app. The app that I use is literally called Preview. Um, I know there's Planoli is another one. It is just an app that lays out your grid and so you can plan it before before uploading it to Instagram just so I know exactly what I want to do and how I want everything to look like before I upload it into Instagram. You don't necessarily need to do this step, but I do just like to make sure everything looks pretty in the end because if everything looks pretty, then the items will look pretty and hopefully we'll all sell. Um, that is the end game. So now that I've prepped for the week, I do have a few items I do need to get shipped out. So this is how I prep to ship my orders. Um, guys, I'm really excited to collaborate with No Issue for this video. They are a sustainable, 100% compostable packaging. They sent me uh, a bunch of shipping poly mailers so that I was able to do 150 orders worth of 100% compostable mailers so that, um, one, I am a thrift store to begin with, which means that the carbon footprint on my store is already very low and this just lowers it so it makes me feel a lot better. Also, for every order that you make with no issue, they do plant a tree, so that makes it even cooler. I could talk about this for so long. I could talk about the importance of being sustainable when it comes to business practices. Um, no issue works with huge brands. I know they work with like Lululemon, so you know they, you know they're good. You can't work with Lululemon and not be good. <laughs> um, so I've been using them for the past two months. 
and I haven't had any issues with the bags. They are a bit thinner than obviously plastic bags because they're 100% uh, compostable, but I can fit a lot of items in these bags, um, and I do know that they will they will be they'll look the same by the time they reach the destination. They won't fall apart just because they're compostable along the way. Um, so I'm really happy to be working with them right now. I think that it makes my my clients really happy to see the no issue bags come in the mail because then they feel good not only about thrift shopping, supporting small business, um, but also being good for the environment in it. So yeah, I'm gonna show you guys how I pack an order. So a while back, I sold this beautiful black satin midi skirt that I almost kept for myself and then didn't keep for myself because I love giving cute items to the store too. Oh my gosh, look at that. Perfect, perfect. Um, so these are the no issue mailers that I was talking about. I ended up getting a pretty big size. I forget what size I got, but I'll leave it down in the description below. Um, so they're able to fit quite a bit of items in them. So I package them. I put, I write little I've got little labels to write the address, so I write the return address and their address on these labels. Um, and I'll package everything up and show you what it looks like. So a while back, back when I was moving from Canada to the UK um, and did my big launch, I got my, my business cards made. Well, I made the business cards and then I got them printed. I printed them with Canva. Vistaprint is also an option. Um, so they're just these really awesome things I made using Photoshop and Canva and they are like a tarot card for thrift stores. Um, and then I just pop one of these in every single order. So I pop one of these in the no issue bag. So obviously I'm not gonna show you her address, but I just wanted to show you uh, this. So I have, I will, by the end of this, have a million of these that I ship out to the post office. Um, I swear the lady at the post office, if she sees like a no issue mailer, she's like, ah, Michelle's in, there she is. Um, I think what was the biggest difference from living in Canada and running my thrift store in Canada versus running my thrift store in the UK is that now all of a sudden shipping went from $15 to three pounds on an order. So paying an extra three pounds is like nothing. Like no one even thinks about like, oh my God, I wish I got free shipping with my, with my order. Um, because in Canada paying an extra $15 when the item itself was $15 did kind of not exactly feel the best, but everyone was always really supportive and I've rarely had people say, no, that's too expensive, like I don't want to pay shipping because that is really expensive for shipping. Um, so the three pounds has been super awesome and super helpful. So I take all of my items, I lug them up in a bag and then I go to the post office. The post office then ships them out and then they are on their way to you, maybe, hopefully, uh, or they're on their way to someone who bought the item. I do do, I do do. I do do, um, if you have, if you buy more than five items, you do get free shipping with me. Um, so it means that the, the shipping goes up a little bit because it's heavier, but then again, you also bought five items. So I'm not going to be like, like mean and not give you free shipping on that because you are obviously great and supported me really well. So yeah, I then think that that's it. I, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments um, and I'll try to respond to you the best that I can about how it has been to run my Instagram thrift store. This is kind of the process of how I do it weekly. I then post my items from the grid um, every every Tuesday and Thursday night at 7 p.m. I found Tuesday and Thursday nights uh, work best for me. I did play around with different days, especially at the beginning when I really started. Um, I did Monday and Wednesday and I found that those didn't work as well as Tuesday and Thursday. My Tuesday sales are always a little bit less than my Thursday sales, but a lot of times on Thursday people will buy what hasn't been sold yet on Tuesday. Um, but I would love to get to a point, and there was a point when my business first started in the summer before I moved that like everything I posted sold, but it's simply just because I moved countries that um, that I'm just building up a new client base. I had such amazing, loyal people in Canada and some of you are still buying from me, which is amazing because I know that shipping is awful when, I, uh, when I'm shipping from the UK to Canada or the UK to the US or the UK to anywhere in the world. Um, really anywhere outside of the UK itself ends up being a little bit more, I believe for Europe it ends up being like seven pounds, just to give you an idea in case you are someone who's thinking of opening up an Instagram thrift store in the UK, uh, just to give you an idea about postage. So yeah, if there's any other questions, I will try to think of questions. Maybe I will make a Q&A video. 
Actually, that sounds like a great idea. Stay tuned for a Q&A video. Follow my Instagram follow th at Thrift and Bold Co. because I will I will make a story for a Q&A thing and then I will make a video that is all about a Q&A so that I can genuinely answer everything you want to know about owning an Instagram thrift store and how I own mine. But yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. Like this video if you like this video. Subscribe if you feel like subscribing. And I will see you guys in my next video.